Okay, this is the Ancient History section, and also some reference books beside it. Um, so I will uh, do these in reverse order, I guess. I kind of have them in order right now of general history and Greece, and then to ancient Rome. Uh, but I kind of I want to show you the t the covers because I think that it adds a little bit of to the video. So here's um so this will be in reverse order. So this is a, a biography of um, Alexander the Great. So if you remember uh, that fiction historical fiction novel I had about the murder in Macedon, so that's about this guy, Alexander the Great. Uh, here's the climax of Rome by Michael Grant. Michael Grant is a wrote a lot of books about ancient uh, history. Here is Volume Four of R Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Gibbon. Volume Four I found in a a bookstore. So I don't know if I'll get the rest, but not a big deal. I, what I do need to get is a uh, abridged. A uh, copy of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. So a bridge means that they take all the good stuff and they put it into one volume. Because there's what? How many volumes in the Decline? Is there six volumes? Maybe there's more. Maybe there's eight. I'm not sure, but um, that's a lot. I don't think I'll. I would probably never read all of it. So I'll maybe, uh, maybe all I need is a an abridged. Here's Tacitus, the Annals of Imperial Rome. So this is a Roman historian an actual Roman of the time. Um, here's Cleopatra. Here's the Greeks by Kitts. Kind of blue. Louis Green. Here's Our Debt to Rome, Greece and Rome. Although this is a book in a series, and it's about... Uh, Survivals of Roman religion. So, here is uh, Thucydides, History of the Peloponnesian War, a famous, also ancient Greek historian, and also a famous ancient Greek historian is Herodotus, the Histories. Um, this is supposed to be about a lot of hearsay kind of history. Uh, he did travel. But he also got a lot of his information just from other travelers. So, at one point, I guess he talks about people that don't have any heads or something, and they have their che their head is in their chest or something, and just some weird stuff about African myth, kind of. So, it's it, isn't it strange? It'd be strange to live in a world in which there are parts of it that we just don't know. Like, wouldn't it be weird if uh, I'll, I'll take an American perspective because most of you watching are probably American. Um, wouldn't it be weird if south of the of the Texan border, it just, no one's been there. We don't know what's there. We know that land continues, but we don't know what's there. Or we send search parties, but they're, they're massacred. They don't return. Or, you know, my brother went down there as a merchant to see if there's anyone there to trade, and he never came back. Like, wouldn't it be weird to live in a world in which there are areas that we know that have land, but we don't know that what's there? These, the Greeks lived in that era. They knew of Ethiopia, which is like uh, northeastern Africa. But further down, they didn't know what was there. They had no idea what was down there. Um, you can look at old maps of, of uh, in the medieval era. Old maps had like sea monsters and stuff in the water because they, they thought that like they'd send escorts out. They'd send boats out to go and find green land, although they didn't know there was a green land there to find. Or to find, they did know, they did have Iceland in the medieval era, but um, to go and find these things, and the boats never came back. They probably, maybe they landed like the Vikings, they landed on, I guess, Newfoundland, but um, they never came back for various reasons. And, and, of course, the Europeans thought, well, a sea monster ate them or something, right? So, it's just, it's it'd be really weird to live in a time in which there were areas of the world in which just no one's ever been and we don't know what's there. Here's Edith Hamilton's mythology. Edith Hamilton's also a famous writer of Greek history, certainly. Here's Ancient Greece by Thomas Martin. I'll get to those. 
Here's Michael Grant, A Short History in Classical Civilization. And also, uh, oh, oh, this is going to fall. Chester G. Starr, History of the Ancient World. So that composes my ancient history section. And uh, obviously, by having these, I think it's important that one studies some ancient history to, to discover how uh, the roots of reason and the roots of individualism, even, where it all came from and where we would be. Well, I guess this is a bit of a conjecture where we would be without it, without classical Greece, and uh, and even Rome, where we, where what kind of governments would we have, and all that stuff. Um, I was going to mention, um, if you look up on YouTube, there is a YouTube channel called Yale Courses, and it's Yale University. They put on a whole bunch of courses, full courses, full lectures, um, on their on their YouTube channel. And I have been through, there is a course on ancient Greece, and I have been through that. Um, and, it's, and it's actually pretty interesting. If you're ever, I don't know if you like to play video games, or if you go out on runs, or bike ride, or something, you can uh, get a, um, an MP3 player, or if you have a laptop, that you don't, that, like if you have a desktop to play games on, you have a laptop beside it, or you guess you could use the same computer. Um, while you're playing a game or doing something like that, um, listen to a lecture on, on something, something you're interested in. It's a good way to, to keep up the, the, the didactic um, pursuit. I don't know. Uh, here's a few books on ancient Africa, ancient African kingdoms. I've read this one. It's actually pretty good. It talks about the different empires, like the Mali Empire and Kush. That was before Egypt, by the way, the Kushians. Uh, there's Ghana, Mali, and Songhai empires, uh, the Kanem Bernu, and etc. So that was pretty good. There's another one, uh, Short History of Africa. So, okay. Next is some more general histories and also just general books and bu big books that I couldn't fit anywhere else. So here is the found the founders of the Western world. Uh oh, by Michael Grant. By Michael Grant. Okay. Gladiators and Caesars. This is an art book actually. Uh, had that for university. I took a course and took a course in sport in the ancient world and did a did very poorly in it. I did get the credit, but that's about it. Didn't learn anything, and that was ten. Uh, whoa, not quite ten years ago. Almost, almost ten years ago. But I kept it around, anyways. It's got pictures, and I'll show you some pictures, I guess. It's got pictures in it of different things. There's the Colosseum, etc. But it's about sport in the ancient world, gladiators and Caesars. It's called. Okay, here's a hundred great military leaders. Here is the rise and fall of great empires. Look out, USA. That's the that's the the uh, the ode that I'm going to produce. Space shuttle story. Here's a, a general history book here. Um, History of the World by Roberts. So that's a reference book. These are all real uh, reference books. You wouldn't necessarily read them cover to cover. Um, here is uh, Art of the World, Egypt. Art of the World must be a book series, and then this one's on Egypt. I found this in a, an old second-hand store, and I thought... The books there were 50 cents each. And it was in good condition, and, and it's got pictures of, of art and architecture of ancient Egypt, and I thought, oh, it's color. I thought, okay, 50 cents, I'll have that. So there's a picture of a fish or something, and there's a picture of a woman. So, yeah. 
All right, here's a monster. Can you see that from here? New York Times Guide to Essential Knowledge. <laughs> Put that in your brain. If only there was a virtual blender that you could, or like a matrix injector, like the Matrix, the movie, you can inject yourself with, with this. That would be fantastic. But that there, it's it's a encyclopedia of essential knowledge. Everything that they thought they deemed as essential. Um, here is a visual fact finder. You know what? Maybe I'll just show you a page just for fun. I'll show you a page in, in here. I'll find something with a picture, maybe. Uh, well, no pictures yet. No, there's actually not really any pictures. I guess didn't really have any room for it. How about I read you off like the big titles here? So wine, Van Gogh. Well, this is all uh, bi um, bi biographical. Nations of the world, U.S. states, awards and prizes. So it's got like Academy Awards, something like that. Um, writer's Guide, talked about punctuation and stuff like that. Uh, boxing, Olympic Games, golf, football, basketball, World Series, um, television, electronic media, stocks, mutual funds, history of business, international economics, classical mythology. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know that was in there. Uh, the Bible, religions, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, West, history of Western philosophy, there's law, later amendments, U.S. Constitution. Look at that. Uh, origin of government, rivers and canals. This is in geography. World population, continents, history of the United States, key battles in world history, major wars in history, world history, um, technology, the internet, history of computing, history of technology, medicine, disease, history of medicine, disorders and psychology, mathematics, Formulas, physics, subatomic particles, history of physics, the elements of chemistry, the earth and upheaval and geology, um, the environment, water, global warming, uh, vertebrate zo zoology, uh, types of plants and botany, ecology, evolution and biology, human body, um, taxonomy, the contents of the universe, this is in astronomy, um, history of Western drama, Shakespeare's major plays. Uh, best American movies. This is in film. Almost done. <laughs> International film, history of film, rock and roll, uh, popular music, American popular music, um, musical forms, Western classical music, great works of Western literature. Oh, that'll be good. I should look through that. Popular literature, liter literary criticism, American literature. The English novel, English poetry, world literature, um, art history of photography, digital photography, technical history of photography, history of Western art. That's all in art. Um, architecture, non-Western architecture, history of architecture. Uh, that's it. Wow. How about that? It's been a lifetime reading this. This baby, that's a that's a weapon. You could you could do some damage with that. But you could do more damage with your mind with that. Actually, that's a good one. Okay, visual fact finder. I had this one as a kid, actually. It says the Kingfisher visual fact finder. Stars and planets, planet Earth, the living world, science and technology, world history, countries of the world, and yes, I think. Pluto is a planet in here. I'm just going to find out. Just for fun. I'm pretty sure Pluto is a planet. Minor planets. Is Pluto a minor planet? Nope, not yet. Not in this book. There's Uranus. Pluto and beyond. Neptune. Pluto and beyond. There it is right there. So. There. Now i got a few left. world's great sailing ships. So, um, as you know, I'm interested in the new world, and I'm also interested in the old boats like that. The old giant men-o'-wars and frigates and flutes, trading flutes and barks and brigs. 
and uh, that kind of stuff. And there's some really nice uh, boats in here. Really neat. Um, I gotta show you a good one here. Or I don't know, I'll show you one. Um, and a lot of these have survived, so you can see some really nice big sail sailing ships. I don't know if you can see that one. Like, look at that. Isn't that just, I think that's just fantastic. So, you got like, uh, some of the boats only had one floor of cannons, and then Man of Wars had, well, they had the Ship of the Lions that had like three floors of cannons, and I don't know if the Man of Wars had more than that, or maybe they were the three, three floors, or. It's nuts, though. Just giant ships, and now of course we have cruise ships, like floating cities or floating towns. They don't have that many people. Can't have that many people on them. But here's a book on pirates. I I have read uh, this one. Um, it's pretty good. It's some interesting stuff about pirates. Of the, uh, the interesting uh, question of why they arose. Would you consider them common thievery that it's just been protracted onto? the open seas that were not, that were easy targets for thieves. They just, it, pirates as just bigger thieves. Is, where did pirates come from? The whole culture of pirateering, skullduggery and stuff like that. Where did that come out of? Here's a nice book on knights. I got this at like a book fair kind of thing, at like a, at a, the local fair. Um, nice color book. I think it was eight dollars, but it's a nice hardcover and full color pictures. And I don't know how much it costs to make these kind of things. What would it cost to print a book like this? Glossy paper and and full color hardcover. How much does it cost to make one of these? I don't know, but it's got some great pictures in it. There's actually here's something for you. There's actually um, a great series that you can get on YouTube. Uh, most of them. It was a TV show that aired on the History Channel called um, Conquest. And I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It's a British guy who's got a shaved head. Woodward or something like that. But it's called Conquest. It's a series. And he goes through all kinds of weaponry. He, he'll do like a... He did a, a show on like the knights or a show on the tournament a show on hand-to-hand -hand combat, like grease wrestling and stuff. A show on knives, using knives and stuff. And yeah, a show on bow and arrow. A show on the crossbow. Um, a show on ninjas. A show on modern um, special ops, like going in, like SWAT team stuff. Um, more and more than that. There was one on the duel. There was one on the musketeers. One on early gunpowder, gun, early guns, early firearms. That's a really good one. You should watch that one. Early firearms. Um, yeah, really good stuff. Go check that out. Here's an atlas. I don't know, not very exciting. Picture atlas, an old one. Oh, the one thing that was neat about this, I had this as a kid. One thing that's neat about this is it had all the commodities, the major commodities they produced. Maybe I'll find something here for you. I'll look, at, I'll look at the U.S., and you can tell me if this is accurate. So here's the U.S. Here's northeastern U.S. I'll just focus on uh, up here. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. Whoop. So you tell me whether you make uh, blueberries in, Monta in uh, Maine. Do you make blueberries in Maine? White pine, potatoes in Maine? What about uh, sugar maples? Vermont, and Ford, there's Ford uh, Ticonderoga, I don't know what the heck that is, the State House of Boston, uh, the Statue of Liberty, um, skiing, do you ski near Albany, um, ocean liners in uh, New York, and tourism, so, and there's a, a mackerel, mackerel near Denver, or Dover, I don't know, so... Yeah. Okay, one more. The Children's Space Atlas. 
Oh, I've got a, uh, what did I do with that moon? I had an atlas of the moon somewhere. Oh, here it is. I guess I'll show that. So there's the Children's Space Atlas. And I'll show you the Atlas of the Moon, because that'll be a little more exciting. Here's the at new Atlas of the Moon. And it's got overlays. It's a it's um, spiral bound. And it's got overlays. So you can get the moon out. Here, I'll show you here. So here's the moon. Here's the moon, right? And then you can put an overlay on top of it, and it labels the craters and stuff. Hopefully you see that. Jeez, there's like a big, big light. Hopefully you see that. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the new Atlas of the Moon. Okay, that's it for uh, reference books and uh, ancient history.